Welcome back to Ray's Coffee and Cards. I'm so glad you're here. If this is your first visit, if you've been with me before, one and all, welcome. Um, so, Flowing Flowers was one of the most recent um, stamp sets that I had ordered from the current mini catalog. And uh, I hadn't had a chance to even touch it or play with it until today. And uh, so some of the uh, ideas that I came up with, I hope to share with you today, and I hope to share inspiration and creativity for you. Um, I am Rachel Henderson. Um, I am a independent Stamping Up demonstrator who resides in Morristown, Tennessee. And uh, if you're tuning in and you live anywhere near me, please give me a shout out, leave a comment. I would love to meet you. And uh, even if you're another demonstrator, oh, very much so welcome, welcome. All right, this was a beautiful distinctive stamp set that really caught my eye. I'm a sucker for all things distinctive. And we call them distinctive or stamping up does because of all the shading and the gradation that you will find in these images and it tends to leave um, much more of a realistic imprint than just a solid um, dense stamp. So uh, the sentiments in here also were something that I really did appreciate and uh, I don't know that we can ever have enough of those. Um, I really don't because we find ourselves in this day and age in a lot of unique situations a lot of different needs out there for our friends, our family, and uh, people that we come in contact with even at work. So um, I got a hold of this today, and the things that I was uh, coming up with and playing with, mm, maybe not so much, and it was kind of like, yeah, that's already been done. Yeah, that's already been done. And so I wanted to do something just a little bit different. So I started looking around at what I already had that maybe something else I had that maybe I hadn't played with might tie into it. And I found watercolor shapes and that is in the current annual catalog. It is available. This is wonderful. It has got so many applications um, just for having all these different shapes, the different sizes. Um, again, I guess you could call this a distinctive because it does have your light, your medium, and your dark and darker areas. So again, um, all that uh, gradation and, and shading in there, and it's beautiful. It is a photopolymer stamp set. And uh, this was before, um, these were manufactured before Stamping Up started doing the other inserts. So uh, anyway, one of the things that I came up with, some of the examples, honestly, guys, I don't think they were, they are good enough to show you. Um, but this was one of them that I had done and I had just took a piece of basic white that was cut four by five and a quarter. And uh, I got out some, what I call earth tones the flower and the sentiment are stamped in the basic gray, and then the background colors are uh, Smoky Slate, Cinnamon Cider, Soft Suede, and Sahara Sand. And they are second and maybe even third generation stamping. And I simply took the large rectangle out of the watercolor shapes and uh, used that on the colors. Now, Cinnamon Cider, and even soft suede can be a pretty intense color. And honestly, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure, I mean, it's been a few hours ago. I'm pretty sure this might've been third generation on the cinnamon cider and on the soft suede. Probably second generation on the uh, Sahara sand and the smoky slate because those colors aren't just real intense anyway. And uh, then full strength, with the um, basic gray for the sentiment and the flower. And I thought, you know, that that's not bad. Um, but us women, we do tend to like our brighter colors. And uh, I don't know how the weather is where you're at. Um, here today, all day, it was overcast, it was gray. They had forecast freezing rain, possibly snow, yada, yada, yada. 
Um, there were some flurries earlier, but thank goodness, as of yet, no freezing rain or anything because it's going to be down in the teens tonight. So, definitely chilly, a time to stay indoors, and a time to stay motivated, creative, and uplifted. Okay, so for tonight's card, I have picked out a totally different color palette that I want to try and use. We'll see how this comes out. I may make a big mess of it, but uh, I have got Night of Navy, Calypso Coral, Fresh Freesia, So Saffron, and Balmy Blue. Um, and again, I suspect I may be stamping this off once, maybe twice, before going to the cardstock with it. And I really did like the texture that the, uh, I embossed this when I got done with the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder that is also in our annual catalog. And I like that so much that I think we're going to do that on tonight's card too. So, all right. So, I have got my normal card base. It is five and a half by eight and a half. It is scored at four and a quarter. No, nothing new there. Um, I have cut, since I want to use Night of Navy for the uh, flower and the sentiment, I wanted to use a Night of Navy layer on top of the white cardstock. And this is cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then the white layer on top is cut at the traditional uh, five by four and a quarter. And I have also duplicated those layers for the inside of the card as well. And something else that I had thought about earlier today, and then did I even think to go and prep to do an envelope to match? No, I did not. Um, but that is something I have been very remiss in is decorating envelopes. And it doesn't take much, and it adds such a wow factor if you're going to be mailing that card or even if you're going to hand deliver that card, it makes such an impact. Um, and, and again, like I said, it doesn't say much. But the whole point of using flowing flowers and watercolor shapes is no dyes. There are no dyes offered with either one of these sets. And I know a lot of times it's so easy for us to get caught up in, oh, I got to have this and I got to have that and, and I have to have the matching DSP and I have to have this and I have to have that. No, sometimes all you need is a SIP card. And what do I mean by SIP? SIP is commonly known as stamps, ink, and paper. It is how we all started and it is awesome to get back to. Um, a lot, you know, all of our time is valuable and I don't care how much you love creating cards and sending out cards, it can get very time consuming. And so this is hopefully, hopefully this card will turn out to be something to inspire you and uh, just look around at what you have. If you don't have this particular set, if you don't have the watercolor shapes, let me tell you, back when I very first started, one of the first techniques I learned to do was just to take one of our clear stamping blocks, and yes, it, it had a bath a few days ago, but I've been, I've been using it hot and heavy, so it's got a little boogers on it. Um, taking this and applying it directly to an ink pad and stamping it off on a card. And I remember making a card that way. Um, I took a larger block than this one. Uh, it may have been, I'm thinking it was the D block. This is our B, I believe. No, sorry, this is our C block. Um, and so I took the little bit larger block, put it in my ink pad, put it to paper, um, and I picked a, a light color. I want to say it was probably something like mint macaron um, that, uh, you know, wasn't a dark color anyway. And uh, again, this has been well over two, three years ago. I might have even stamped it off once, uh, depending on how juicy your ink pad is. And then I just took another stamp in their memento black ink and stamped on top of it. And it was a very striking card. It was so easy to do. I didn't need any special materials. And so that is something to think about if you don't have um, like the watercolor shapes. But again, this is one of those stamp sets 
that is so versatile um, and will stand the test of time that uh, even when it retires, I may very well just elect to go ahead and keep this in my collection uh, just from all the techniques and things that you can do with it. And any of these shapes would be so easy to die cut with your um, with a circle, punch out with a circle punch, stitched rectangles would um, probably cut this one out. Um, any of these and, and fussy cutting. I am not a fussy cutter. I do not like to fussy cut, but these would be super, super easy to fussy cut in case you wanted to uh, use dimensionals behind it on your card. Um, just whatever application uh, is very versatile. Okay, so I have already got the biggest flower from the stamp set already mounted. And yeah, I've got little I've used this hot and heavy today, guys. I can't tell you how many times I have stamped and cleaned this stamp. Um, so my block is looking a little well used. And I already have the rectangle that we are going to use. And I already have my sentiment and I already have the small flower from the set. There's actually three flowers in that set. Um, and that, that was the smallest one. Okay. So, with our color palette in mind, I hope I don't mess this up, guys. Um, I didn't uh, pre-do what I wanted to do here tonight um, to see just exactly how all my colors were going to mesh together, but hopefully they'll, they'll look really good. Okay, so, we're going to put the Knight of Navy to the side for the moment. And I want to start with um, So Saffron. Let's start with So Saffron. Let's see what we come up with. Um, looking at my pad, it almost looks like maybe it could use some re-inking, but honestly, every time I stamped with it today, it was still good and juicy. So appearances aside, um, and I'm going to choose to turn my stamp up and take my pad to it and it's not going to stamp uh, it's not going to apply the ink you know in a solid layer because there is graduation here and now I just want to stamp this off see how that looks without dropping it and if I stamp off I think second generation is going to be fine let's try that again I don't need to have the dropsies now that I'm making a video. Okay, so let's, okay. That's looking pretty juicy and wet. I'm gonna slide that over, make sure my cardstock is laying flat and probably right about there. It doesn't matter if it's straight this way or straight this way, doesn't matter. This is kind of a, um, gonna be kind of a laid back look when all is said and done. And honestly, that kind of stamped a little bit um, darker than I meant for it to, but we're gonna go with that because as these dry and as they get a few hours into them, they do lighten up a little bit. Now, the only time constraint on doing a technique like this is that you do have to stop and clean your stamp each time. And my stamping scrub is actually still pretty damp from all the cleaning I did earlier today with all these stamps. Okay, we're clean, we're good to go. You know, a lot of times it's okay if you're using a lighter color ink and then go into a darker color ink pad. It's probably not going to hurt anything, but I, I would just soon not. I would just soon uh, not feel like I'm going to um, contaminate one color into another. So, having said that, let's, uh, let's do our fresh freesia. I'm not using this new in color enough, and I fell in love with all of our new in colors that were released in this year's catalog, um, and actually was able to do a card 
using all five of the end colors on one card and it was beautiful. Um, yours truly, I have a bad habit. I don't think about taking photographs of all the stuff that I make. Um, nine times out of 10, I have someone on my mind that I want this card to go to. And so I uh, tend to already be uh, wanting to get it in the mail and, uh, and get it on its way to someone. I'm going to offset that a bit. Now I'm not trying to keep all of my borders just so-so um, around on my card. However, I am trying to make sure that they're not too, too far off from each other. Um, you still want to end up with that pleasing design and balance, even though we are using a set that has irregular edges. And I don't know if you can really see that, but the way the edges and things are cut in this I don't know if that's showing up on camera. My lighting is awfully dim. Let me see. Is that better? Is that better, guys? Can you see a little bit better some of the detail around the edges? It's almost got kind of a hand-torn or a little bit of a raggedy edge. It is not perfectly straight. So that lends itself well to uh, what I call a laid-back card. And sometimes we just need those, right? All right, so we have that clean. Let's go into Calypso Coral. My brain shut down there for just a second. All right, let me stamp that off. See how intense that is? In order to stamp on top of that, I think I really think third generation with that color might be better than second generation. So one, two, three. Like I said, no rhyme or reason. And you could definitely add in more colors. You could definitely um, experiment with uh, the different shapes that are in that set. In fact, earlier today, I'll show you one real quick. I wanted to use just all greens, and so I've got Just Jade, um, um, Mint Macaron, some, um, oh, I don't even remember now, all the different colors that I used in the green family. And so, it, it was just a ha-ha spur of the moment. But yeah, you could definitely mix the shapes if you wanted to do that. So let me get the excess off of here and close this up. Let's get this clean. And I'm trying really hard for this not to be a very long video. You know, it's amazing. You don't realize how how time consuming maybe it is when you're doing a video because I can't fly through a video like I would if I was standing here doing things and just reaching and grabbing and stamping and going um, because I need to take time to slow down and uh, explain what I'm doing and why. And when you're doing it by yourself, you don't have to do that. Balmy blue tends not to be too intense but it's, it's got some heft to it, and I'm thinking, hmm, let's do that one, mm, second generation. Now, I will tell you, when you're doing this, take note, even when you're stamping off, if I stamp this off and I hold it for a little bit, it's going to get rid of more ink than if I had inked it up and just kissed the paper a little bit. It's not gonna take as much of that ink. Um, bear that in mind. That may help you in the future when you're doing second and third generation stamping as to how much you are stamping off. Um, let's see, where do I wanna go with this one? I kinda wanna overlap. Some of the color tones that you get when you're overlapping colors like this is really neat. There we go. 
I don't know about you, but I like those colors and I like them together. However, if you decide to try this, please pick out your own colors, experiment. It's a lot of fun. And it's not only a lot of fun, but it's actually how we learn, isn't it? We just get in and start creating. And uh, when you're starting out, trying to come up with a design and uh, definitely use typing paper, use some uh, ultra cheap cardstock um, to kind of figure out what looks good, what doesn't look good, etc., etc. Okay, so we have our background. So I am going to get my Knight of Navy and stamp the flower first, and then we will stamp the sentiment under it this okay and as you can tell some areas are going to be darker and some are just barely going to have a trace of ink and to be honest after i mounted this stamp i had to go back and look at the stamp case because i wouldn't i thought well okay is does it go this way does it go this way that didn't really look right but honestly, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way, but on the stamp case, it shows the flower going this way with the leaves over to the left. All right, now this, I am gonna semi-center and plop that down. And just give nice, even pressure, especially in the middle where, um, where the ink is gonna be the lightest. Make sure I get good pressure. Here we go. It doesn't look too bad. That's showing up actually pretty nice. All right. I don't need to close that up just yet. I do need to stamp this off. That really intense Night of Navy ink before I clean it in my Stampin' Scrub. So I had something really interesting happen to me this week, and I do want to pass it on because I know I am not the only one in the same boat. Yeah, I'm almost out. About time for a refill. Um, I struggle a little bit with technology. Not as much as some people would struggle with it, but, you know, the average person um, doesn't need to know about video editing, doesn't need to know about email marketing, and all that kind of thing. And I had been aware of this lady for a while, but I hadn't really checked into her. Uh, one of the YouTube demonstrators, Stampin' Up! demonstrators that I simply adore. I have adored her for a couple of years now. Her name is Wendy Cranford. This lady is so smart, so intelligent, so witty. And she referred to another Stampin' Up! demonstrator that has a business course for Stamping Up Demonstrators. Well, earlier this week, I checked her out. I was so impressed, I signed up to do her business course. So, guys, what I have already learned, my head is still spinning. This lady is amazing. If you have not already heard of her, her name is Rhonda Wade, and Rhonda is spelled without the H. It's R-O-N-D-A-W-A-D-E. Please check her out. If you're like me and you're kind of struggling with knowing how to do certain things or why to do certain things, um, I, I would love to send that tip on. And I hope that I help someone who is struggling, who is wishing there was a business course out there um, just to help demonstrators. And this woman has a heart for God. Uh, she truly does. She has got a Facebook group called um, Creating for Christ. And I am a member of that group, but I have not joined in yet. Um, 
to tell you the truth, the things that they are coming up with in that group were just so mind blowing. And I, I have actually have felt a little bit intimidated, to be very honest. Um, but she is wonderful. I am blown away by what I have signed up for. And I can tell you, she is a real deal. So if you are like me and you are struggling, please find her and uh, connect with her and sign up for one of her courses. I should have been prepared. I didn't realize I was even gonna talk about that in this video and I should have had the link for you. Um, I will do my best to remember to put the link under the video in the description below once this is all said and done, okay? But yes, she is phenomenal. She's very smart. She's been at this a while. She knows what works, what doesn't work, and I just can't celebrate what she has done enough. Um, all right, let's at this point, oh, I actually stamped that a little straight and I wasn't even paying attention because I was running my mouth. Let's lay this over for just a moment. Let me get my card base and everything out of the way. And we are gonna get out this Tasteful Textile 3D Embossing Folder. Some of you may still have a Big Shot. You know, for years, Stampin' Up! sold the Big Shot um, emboss and die cut machine before they came out with their own. Um, this is a 3D folder. It is really thick. Now, with their current machine, with the Stampin' Up! cut and emboss machine, you're only gonna use the platform and the gray specialty plate. That's all you need with this 3D embossing folder. If you still have a big shot and, and it's working for you and so you didn't upgrade to the stamping up machine, that's fine. What I would recommend, um, because and, and, and this is kind of ratty looking, okay? But I have a note that I keep in here, you know, in my folder just in case. Um, to make a shim for the 3D textile, tasteful textile embossing folder, because it for the big shot, it just needs a little something something. And so I had a scrap where I had gone to make a card, and can you tell I, I stamped it crooked? And rather than trash it, I thought I'm gonna hold on to this. I can use this for something. Well, lo and behold, it is the perfect shim to use this with the Big Shot, okay? It'll just give that little extra something so that you get that good, clear, um, definite embossing. So I'm gonna get out my Big Boss. I kinda have it somewhat prepped. I have my gray specialty plate and I have my number one platform plate. And uh, I don't know of anything that you're gonna be doing with this machine that you will not need this number one. Okay, so that's stamping up on their embossing folders. I've not seen anybody else do this, and I don't think stamping up always did it, but you have this straight line right here um, that helps you line up your cardstock to get it even. Honestly, um, I'm not real worried with the design of this particular embossing folder. Uh, whether or not it's perfectly straight, you're not going to be able to tell. So, let me push that out. You always want to send your embossing folders in with the, uh, the folded side going in. This will help prevent uh, damage, wear, and tear on your embossing folder. I've never had one tear up, but I'm always careful to do it the way they say to do it. So, we're going to crank this through. And... We're gonna come back once. I really didn't have to do that, but you know, sometimes we get into our little habits. Not to be a Sheldon where I feel like I have to knock three times, but you get the idea. All right, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That added such dimension and interest and pizzazz just by using an embossing folder. And these embossing folders, I've got some that are retired that I have used over and over and over again, and they're still just like new. They are a worthwhile investment. They are not expensive, and uh, they can really make a card. They really can. 
All right, let's start getting our layers put together here. Um, I really like that. And that has faded out just a little bit and it will fade just a little bit more. Um, I really didn't think I wanted to use black. Um, I want, you know, just wasn't really sure how that was gonna go. Now on the inside of, straighten it up, I'm crooked. There we go. Um, on the inside, all I wanted to do, let me get my Knight of Navy back out and let me get, do I wanna use this one? Don't wanna use that one. Either one would work for the inside of the card. Um, eh, let's use this one. Now I'm only gonna go a little bit into my stamp pad because I'm not gonna do the whole flower and all the leaves and all the splatter on the inside, I'm just not. Let me kind of see where I'm at with that. Let's see how dark that's gonna be. Not bad. All right, let's do that one more time and then we're gonna get ready and I wanna stamp the corner. Rearrange here a little bit. All right, I just want a little bit of it up into the corner, just a little. I like it, I like it. It <clears throat> continues the outer design of the card to the inside of the card. So there is your continuity. All right, let's stamp you off and clean you. I don't know about you guys, I can't stand to have anything dirty laying around. Um, you know, we we invest in our stamps and in our dyes and things, and I will tell you, if you're just starting out, please get in the habit of always, always, always cleaning and putting away as soon as you are done with something. Um, because I can guarantee you, if you are not in that habit, you are going to lose uh, some of your investment, literally, you will lose it. Okay, I um, I have someone, again, in mind for this card. Um, and I wanted um, to use something more than the average sentiment on the inside of the card. I have the blessing of having a lot of scripture stamps. I have made that one of my requirements and uh, in doing the card ministry for church is, you know, definitely a prerequisite because part of being the card ministry is trying to show God and his love and his care and his concern to others and that we also have love, care, and concern just like God does for them. And uh, uh, our Sunday school class, the one that I attend at church, is called the Romans 12 class. And so, uh, when I found this one, it's not from Romans 12, but it's Romans 1 12. Simply says, each of us will be a blessing to the other. Let me kind of sort of get that straight. Um, the way this particular stamp is designed, and I think it was a Hobby Lobby acquisition at some point. Um, it's not meant to be real straight. It, it's kind of done in a whimsical format but I thought it lent itself well to this card. Um, the, the font they use down here, the script font, is not necessarily whimsical, but I thought it kind of tied in pretty well. And so that's what I chose to put on the inside of this card. All right, once again, where'd my scratch paper go? What did I do with it? I had it, oh, here it is. Let's stamp off what we can, and we will claim that. And then I think we are done with the stamping, and we're just going to get everything put together. All right, nice and clean. Let me look on here. Paper crafts, 749, no telling 
how many years ago print works is what's on the bottom of that not familiar with that company don't even know if they're still around um but i love that stamp i do i do wish stamping up would come out with more scripture stamps and uh religious easter sets complete with dyes um they're not offering that i'm sure there is a reason why they are not offering that um, and until they do unfortunately i'll have to acquire those somewhere else but that's okay that's all right not every company can be everything for everybody what stampin up does is wonderful um they i, I can't imagine all the background efforts hard work uh designing planning uh creation that they are putting into all the marvelous products they do sell us and their customer service cannot be beat cannot i challenge you to find any other company that is caring and responsive if something should go wrong, they do bend over to make it right. They absolutely do. I have had firsthand experience with that, and that really made an impression on me when I first started ordering from Stampin' Up, and that was long before I signed up to be a demonstrator. When I first uh, signed up to be a demonstrator, honestly, yours truly, I uh, wasn't really interested in the business side of it. It took a while for that to kind of grab hold in my mind. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see how to get this straight without being in the camera. Oh, heavens. All right. Well, not the best, but not the worst, right? Just gently, gently. All right, let's get ready to do the inside of the card. So what do you think so far? If you got this card in the mail, if someone made you this card, would it not put a smile on your face? You know, something about those colors, at least for me, they are very pleasing. Um, they're uplifting. They're joyful. Um, they just kind of do your heart good. Now, I like my earth tones and things, too. Honestly, I probably use them more maybe in the fall, you know, as the leaves are turning colors and everything is going dormant. Let's see if I can see what I'm doing here. I did have a cup of coffee before doing this, guys. It's getting kind of late in the day. It's kind of late here. And uh, it's after 6 o'clock. Oh, heavens. It's 7.14, according to my... Uh, clock over here on my echo five i really love this thing my daughter sent it to me um last year year for last for mother's day and honestly i would have never thought about buying one for myself earlier today when i was in here trying to be creative and praying for um different people off and on i had um I had her, I can't say her name, okay, you can understand why, um, but I had her play Mercy Me, and girl, I was just all kind of dancing up in here, oh my goodness, Mercy Me is so uplifting, a lot of their songs are just joyful, they're just joyful, and helps fill that heart with gratitude. You know, sometimes I think we get so caught up in the minutia of, of daily living and some of our struggles and things that we have to get done. And um, sometimes it can be real easy to be a sourpuss, but I guarantee you, if you need your spirits raised, put you on some mercy me. Um, or even Chris Tomlin, he, he's not as fast beat as mercy me. Um, but the songs that he writes and, and that sense of worship um, can really fill your heart. All right, here we go. So here's the inside. Here's the outside. Um, I do have a stamp that I use when I remember to on the back. It says handmade just for you. And then I'll sign my name or I'll initial it or something. Um, but that even that's not a prerequisite. Um, there is a... Um, 
a stamp that I like to use um, on the back when I'm doing sympathy cards, and it's a scripture verse. It says, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted out of Matthew. And I always feel like it is so appropriate to put that on there because inevitably when you send a card, they're going to turn it over. They want to know where you got that card nine times out of ten, especially if they have never gotten a handmade card. So, all right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for today. Here are these little... The ones I feel like are good enough to show you. I mean, I, I did other things today, but honestly, <laughs> they didn't come out so well. So anyway, I hope you guys have had a good week. I hope your weekend is going even better. Um, anything that uh, that you are struggling with, my, my heart is with you and my prayers are with you uh, in my blanket prayers for those that I don't even know. So... Y'all have a blessed weekend, and uh, I hope to be back here with you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.